Good morning. I'd like to devote this session to discuss the interaction or the meeting between Tanakh and Tfilah. And in a sense, it's maybe no less about Tfilah than about Tanakh, or maybe even more so. At the end of the day, Tanakh and Tfilah in particular are transferred into Avodat Hashem, and as such, not only you know, the abstract knowledge, intellectual knowledge is important, but also uh, the application or how we use to Tanakh to express ourselves uh, when we approach the Kadosh Baruch Hu, be it in times of happiness and joy, be it in times of distress and, and illness and tragedy, Chaz um, This session is devoted to the memory of, uh, of Danny Beller, I really can't think of a better example of a person who combined tefillah and Tanakh and uh, both his knowledge and his personality to uh, really be in Oved Hashem. Uh, and uh, Tilim especially with its, uh, with its uh, combination of energy and the ability to say it's palu, just simply to uh, sense of wonder and amazement at the world and the, on the one hand, the other hand, the mission to uh, basically go forward into the wor into the world and uh, to do your job and to repeat and to try to improve it and uh, to be obeyed Hashem uh, was ex extremely characteristic of Ravdani. Uh, he was a dynamo of energy and of Adat Hashem and uh, I think he said Tilim in times of joy and also uh, he said Tilim many Tilim in times of, of a tragedy as well and. Uh, even visiting him uh, when he was ill already, it was clear that Tehillim and uh, the little Tefillah and Tanakh were integral to his being and to his personality. And uh, I just thought it was an inspiration for all of us and the Limud should be uh, and the family should uh, have a sense of uplifting from the, from the knowledge that you know, they all remember, but he continues, to, he continues to inspire us as well. So when I was a uh, 17 year old, uh, I just finished high school here in Israel. I uh, I was I went to visit the Rav in the summer of 1978, and I just I was fresh off my bagrut. And uh, one one afternoon, the Rav said to me, like you know, how was school, etc. And uh, he asked me. Uh, I said, I told him, no, I just finished the bagrut in Tanakh. So he asked, what was the curriculum? Like, which, which, parts, of, which parts of Tanakh were Mahaya uh, Bachomer, as they say here? Uh, and uh, so I said to him, you know, Sebet Varim and um, parts of Yishayahu and Tehillim. To which he immediately asked, which Prakim and Tehillim? So I gave him the list, and I don't remember, I don't remember all of it anymore, but I gave him a list that was scattered, assorted Prakim. Uh, Collected from Tehillim, one dealt with the Odyssey, and one dealt with and whatever, and with David Amelach's life, and then one dealt with Tshuva. After he heard the whole list, he said to me, If I was in charge of Tanakh and Yisrael Chinuch, I would choose the Prakim, which we do in Davening. Because those are the Prakim at the end of the day we constantly use, and that we meet them weekly, daily, uh, monthly. Uh, and he basically thought we should prioritize those prakim over uh, all the others, even though the others are important per se. And, uh, and he quotes them occasionally when he has to, but uh, he really felt that the tefillah and or the, or the meal between tehillim and tefillah should be prioritized. So this morning I would try to fulfill his tzavah and to uh, at least in this uh, in this forum to try to uh, address uh, the element of tehillim within tefillah. Now, there are many, many psukim, of course, quoted in tefillah, but there are three major focuses, uh, at least that come to my mind immediately. One is psukim de zimra, you know, the prakim we say every morning, and then Shabbat in expanded version, but we say every morning uh, as part of shacharit. There is Kabbalat Shabbat, which is a later part of uh, tefillah, introduced in the only 16th century, but nevertheless, uh, it is a whole bunch of prakim. And of course, Halel. So we have these three uh, focuses. We we'll try to, there are certain common denominators to all three of them, and uh, we we'll try to focus upon those. And time permitting, we'll try then to analyze uh, some of them uh, in greater detail. I will do it 
by this, but in this order, Pesukei de Zimra, Kabbat Shabbat and Halil, not because it's more, not because necessarily I have greater insights into Pesukei de Zimra, but still because daily, weekly, monthly, and it's more frequent, uh, so Halachas is called Tadir Kodem, and also simply in terms of the utility of being able to utilize it, so I would like to start with those which are part of daily tefillah. <coughs> uh, more general observation, uh, not only do I focus upon, if you want, the arrangement between the prakim and less upon individual pasuk. There are hundreds of psukim in this uh, plan and just under an hour to discuss them. But it's also more than that. Uh, tilim seems to me to indeed uh, have a... And tilim has uh, the interplay between prakim, the sequence of the prakim is important. Even though each one in theory is, is an individual poem, it is not simply a list of sonnets or, or, or poems that happen to be haphazardly arranged together. There often are whole units which uh, are presented as units, and the, the connection between the various prakim are, uh, are important. Uh, take one obvious example, Shem Alot is clearly a unit of 15 prakim, and uh, they were said in Surah Beit HaShoyva as a unit, uh, and the same holds true of Sukkot de Zimra and of Halel and, uh, and the like. Okay, so let's uh, begin now with the analysis of Pesuket de Zimra or the, and the basic idea behind it. Pesuket <coughs> de Zimra, Prakim, Kuf, Mem, Hei, Tu, Kuf, Nun, six, uh, six Prakim and seven Tehilim, um, all of which start with Hallelujah, first one almost, uh, but all, uh, they all have the same beginning, the same ending, uh, Hallelujah, and they the, the, the end with the word Hallelujah. What are we trying to, to achieve with this? So let us let Chazal speak for a moment. The Gemara Masechet Shabbat says as follows: Amar biyosi yehei chelki im gomre halel bechol yom. Because I should be amongst those, I should be counted and considered among those who recite halel every day. To which the Gemara retorts, but halal is not said every day, and it is prohibited to say halal every day. Uh, halal can be said only on the appointed times. If a person says halal every day, the Gemara calls it blasphemous because if every day is special, so no day is special. <laughs> so you can only uh, you can only have special days when you keep them as such. So therefore, you cannot say halal every day. To which the Gemara answers, you have two kinds of halal. Hahu psukei de zimra. Then the psukei de zimra are called by the Gemara daily halal. There is the special halal for special occasions, what we call halal. Psukei de zimra is also halal. Now, what does halal mean? Uh, or for a moment, let us now return to psukei de zimra. Psukei de zimra talk about halal. They all start hallelujah, praise God, praise Him. Um, now, uh, each one has the word halal. Hallelujah, 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 I should praise God, I should praise Him, uh, with, and so on and so forth. However, um, if we look at Sukkot Zimra for a moment, and we also compare it with the regular halal, we will immediately notice something else. And here uh, we have to point out two concepts which are central to this whole discussion. One is Hallel, the other is Hoda'a. We, we often put them together. We say in Hanukkah, we hold out to Hallel, Shimcha Gadol. To thank and praise your, your great name. And in many other places, we talk about Hallel, the Hoda'a. However, they're basically very radically different concepts. <coughs> Hallel means to thank. Excuse me, Hallel means to praise. Hoda'a, the Hoda'ot, means to thank. What is the difference between them? In a hoda'a, man is at the center. I thank you because you did me a favor. You looked after me, you took care of my needs, you provided for me. When uh, you do that, essentially, what is the motivating fact? What's the pivot? It really is my needs. Since I have needs, and you cater to them, and you provide for them, so I'm at the center, and I recognize that you took my needs into account, but basically, I'm dictating the whole motion. 
because I have needs, I'm in distress, or because uh, you want to help me. So you therefore come and help me out. If I didn't have any needs, you would not be doing anything. So since I'm at the center, and you are taking care and looking after me. And that is basically hoda'a. Hallel, not thanksgiving, but praise. I can praise for something which I don't have any need. With my praise, I talk about how great you are, I talk about how wonderful you are, and so on and so forth. And, but not necessarily because I have any needs. I may have no needs at all. I can praise someone. I can praise someone for a wonderful musical uh, piece, even though I don't like music. I never listen to it. I don't plan to listen to it. Or take another, take another example. I think the Romans use this example. Um, a skyscraper is an object of praise. Say, so what a wonderful architect. What an amazing engineer. You, know, you are impressed by it. You consider it a great work. So you say to yourself, the person who, bu who, who built this, he's an amazing person. He is, uh, his vision, is, uh, his knowledge, his wisdom are extremely impressive. But I may never use the building. For my needs, I, you know, one story building, a hut may be good enough. I don't need to, to work on the 86th floor, and I don't need uh, a skyscraper at all. I need simply a plain room uh, for an office, or I need a, a room or two to, to sleep in. It's totally unnecessary. So I'm impressed. Uh, I can stand here now and recognize that the Alps exist. <coughs> or I can think about some uh, a famous bridge or building. So I can praise the creator or the architect of Havdil. I can say the Alps are really impressive. And Maramu Masech Hashem. How great are you? What great wisdom went into creating the Alps and the Himalayas? But my needs for my life may be totally insignificant. A thanks again is the reverse. It may be a very simple building, maybe a hut, it may be a tent. I just thank you for the shelter. You know, it's, I don't need a shelter in a skyscraper, so I, I can praise a skyscraper, I have to thank for it. On the other hand, if I have a very simple uh, building, which doesn't require any great wisdom, no knowledge, it's not impressive, but if it provides my needs, I have to thank for it. So thanks, or thanksgiving, and praise are very different concepts. And if you think about the praise, they're not the person uttering the praise at the center, rather the person being praised is at the center. It's his knowledge and his wisdom which center the chain of speech that I now praising him and uh, glorifying him are, uh, are because of his, his actions, not because of my needs. So there's a big difference who's at the center and of course also what are you saying, what are you doing? And every time you come to tefillah, you always have this dual uh, system where you have to ask yourself, is tefillah essentially out to praise God, to speak about his greatness, his glory, or is tefillah to thank him for looking after me, or to petition that he should look after me. Let's take a simple example. Um, you have tefillah shmonasri, the most basic uh, component of tefillah. So the Rambam describes the structure of shmonasri, gimel vishonot shevach, the first day of praise, and Tzayot Bakasha, the middle, the intermediate section is request petitions for our need. You supplicate that the Kodesh Baruch Hu should provide you with Parnasa, with, uh, with health, uh, with Geulah, and, and, and so on. Achronot Hoda'a, Thanksgiving. Let's, for a moment, let's look, let's look at it. We say, We're not thanking God for that. None of us have been resurrected, and none of us, and none of us is saying that He took us from the dead and made us alive again. Rather, we are praising His capabilities. We believe, and we state for the record that we believe, you're great, and you master nature, and you can override nature. You can also but we don't thank for having happened. We praise for the capability. On the other hand, when we say in Modin, 
על ניסיך שיכול ללמד לפלותך וטובותך, my fingers ברוך הוא, that every minute, every second of the day, I can move my fingers, I can open my eyes, I can speak, I can, uh, I can breathe. There indeed I am thanking. So the first three praise, the last three are involved in thanksgiving. And the same question, every time we'll find the tefillah, we'll have to ask which of the two is this? and which to prioritize, and what is, this, what is this focal, what is the focus of Shmanasri? Is it the beginning or the end? Uh, in this case, the answer is probably the middle, and uh, what does that mean? Um, and uh, we also find throughout Tfilah either arguments or this duality. I'll give two examples, and then we'll move on to the Tilim parts. Um, we say every morning, Bukot HaShachar, and you, get, you wake up, and there's a list of brachot that's supposed to recite. Pokech ivri, matir asurim, and God opens our eyes, he allows us movement, he provides clothing, shelter, and, and so on. We say a whole list of brachot every morning. When do you say them? There's one opinion, or the Rambam was the opinion, I should really say, you do it in real time. Namely, if, for instance, you wore a belt this morning, you say, Ozei Yisodi you didn't wear a belt, uh, so you don't say it. Uh, you, heard, uh, you heard a rooster, you say, you didn't hear a rooster, uh, you do not. I once had a cousin from Chicago who came to visit here in uh, Lonshavut, and he walked into shul, he heard a rooster, and he made the bracha. I said to me, the first time in my life I've ever said, he was uh, not a bar mitzvah boy, he was well in, um, advanced in his years. Uh, he never said that's really not because he never had a rooster in Chicago. And uh, <coughs> so, uh, Hashem, is still roosters at the time at least. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so on and so forth. According to the Rambam, you do not make a bracha unless you actually bumped in or you've actually experienced the phenomenon. The rush, and that's Ashkenazis nowadays, we say them all in shul. You go to shul and you rattle off all, all, all of the brachot. Why? Sidro shel olam, because this is how the way the world runs. But to put it differently, the Rambam sees as Thanksgiving. So if I needed shoes this morning, I make the bracha. If I didn't need them, I don't make the bracha. If I wore a hat, I make the bracha. I didn't, I don't, and so on, because I'm thanking. And if I didn't need it, the rush thinks I'm praising. If I'm praising, that happens independent of I needed it. That happens even if... Uh, I know it exists, and therefore you make the bracha every day because this is how the world is run. Okay, and I could, I could stand here and multiply examples with tefillah outside Tanakh. But now let's go back to Tanakh. <coughs> when, when Chazal came and inserted um, the tefillot or tehillim into Pesuket de Zimra, <coughs> what did they have to achieve? So I quoted before, it's called Halel Shemachol Yom. It's a daily Halel. So now, let's take a look at Hallel for a moment, and we will skip now to the real Hallel. If you look at Hallel and its structure, it's very easy to really divide Hallel. I said for Tilim always has to be viewed at the level of the chapter and, and the parrot, and not only the individual verse. If you look at Hallel, um, you can easily discern in two major movements. And like often happens in Tilim, there there's a friend. Hallel begins, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avdei Hashem, praise the Kadosh Baruch Hu, all of his servants, meaning all of mankind, basically. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avdei Hashem. Let's say, thank you for for a moment. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avdei Hashem, Hallelujah, Et Shem Hashem, etc., etc. Now, I'm skipping through the rest of the here at the moment and going to the end. This unit concludes... Hallelujah, Hashem kol goyim, shabachu kol omim, right? Praise the Kaddish Baruch Hu, all of the nations. Hallelujah, Hashem kol goyim, shabachu kol omim. Everyone should praise Him, which is, of course, this is, this is the frame to the beginning. The, the caption in the first chapter is, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Avdei Hashem, all of God's servants. It means everybody also. Avdei Hashem and kol goyim are really one to say, because everyone really is subordinate to Kaddish Baruch Hu. So you say, Hallelujah, Lord De Hashem. We then have all the in between Psukim. We conclude, Hallelujah, Kol Goyim. Now, uh, and why? Here's a very interesting. 
Who the Shem called Goyim? Shabichu Kol Haumim. All the Goyim, all the nations, should praise Kol Shabichu. Why? Ki Gavar Aleinu Chasdo. The Met Hashem Leolam. All the Goyim should thank the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Why? Because they're not Israel. Now, if you're a Jew, that's a very nice sentiment. Uh, if you're a Goy, why in the world would you want to praise God over the Jews? In other words, the, the Pasuk is saying here, Halut Hashem kol Goyim, Shabichu kol Ha'umim. Everyone, all the nations, should praise the Kadosh Baruch Hu ki gavar aleinu chasdo. Because he's helping Am Yisrael. Assuming uh, so Aleinu means Am Yisrael. Now, uh, the Gemara, of course, asked this question. Like, why in the world should the Goyim be doing that? Someone could give, and I, I will not, uh, I will not go, I won't follow this direction. You could claim that what's good for Ami Yisrael is good for the whole world. Uh, there are such approaches. But to me, it seems much simpler, which is, um, the question here, are we talking about Halel or Hoda'ah? If we talk about Hoda'ah, we talk about the need to thank God, I have to thank him for what he did to you, and certainly not from competition with you, in other words, there's no need for Goy to thank the Kaddish Baruch Hu for what he did to Am Yisrael. We don't expect Goy to thank God for what he did for the Jews. But to pray, it's something like different. Think for a moment, you go to a sporting event, and someone on the opposing team, um, he does something which is really amazing in terms of, uh, you know, whether he made, it's a catch, uh, or, um, or he makes some amazing, uh, you know, he, he catches something spectacularly or the like, you may, you may be quite upset that your team is losing now, but you cannot but be impressed by his abilities. In other words, uh, it's one thing to who you're rooting for, and you don't have to be happy that the opposing team has such uh, great players, um, but uh, you do have to respect their abilities uh, and their execution. And the going of being told here Seek Kadosh Baruch Hu's power, praise Him. Not being taught to thank, but to praise. Ki gavad el chasdod, emet Hashem leolam. Emet Hashem is there, even if you necessarily, if you do not necessarily appreciate the emet, or it's not working in your favor. But the emet, in other words, the capabilities, the power, and, and, and His awesomeness are there on display. Emet Hashem leolam, hallelujah. Then the second unit begins. Hodu Hashem ki tov. Thank. There was we go. Hallelujah, Lord the Hashem, and Hallelujah, Hashem called Goyim, and we then proceed to Hallelujah, Hashem Kitov. This is the first pasuk here, and the last pasuk, all the way at the end. Of course, is also Hallelujah, Hashem Kitov, Ki Olam Chasdo. Meaning, there are really two units here. There's one unit, which is the unit of praise, Hallelujah. It's another unit, which is the unit of the praise for Thanksgiving. Hold Hashem Kitov, Kilam Chasdo. And over there, I don't expect they're going to uh, thank God for our, uh, for our help to us. And here we say something else, right? Here we say, Sabuni, Kogoyim, Sabuni, Shem Hashem. Sabuni, Gamsu, Shem Hashem. All the Goyim are attacking me. All the Goyim are surrounding me. And I'm going to thank the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Not tell the Goyim to thank the Kaddish Baruch Hu. Here, I'm going to do the Thanksgiving. <coughs> And so therefore, but essentially, we have two units. And now this creates interesting questions in terms of um, the relationship between the units, which is the primary one, which is the secondary one. Just to give, um, give an, an interesting example, uh, at Pesach night, we, uh, we say Halil essentially as Thanksgiving. I don't want to explain now the halal. To get into a lot of details will uh, be too time consuming. <coughs> but essentially, you say Hallel as Hoda'ah and not as Hallel, as Thanksgiving, not as praise. And we therefore we incorporate it into the Lila Seder, because the whole point of the Seder is to relive and to reenact leaving Egypt. And the, the strongest sentiment there is that of Thanksgiving, because you've been rescued. Uh, Okay, now, to, uh, if you take Shirat Hayam, on the other hand, Shirat Hayam talks about how God's greatness in basically defeating the Egyptians. It's more Halel, less Hoda'ah. <coughs> okay, now let's talk about the Zimra. Tzuket Zimra, let's ask, which is 
the essential component uh, that, oh, so do, we, do we have in the Zimra the same setup? And the answer I think is yes. Pesuket the Zimra, the basic or the, the central unit is from Ashrei through Kol Neshavata Lel Kaharuya. That's Prakim from 145 to 150, Kufan Hay to Kufnun. That is, uh, that's the essence of Pesuket the Zimra. But we have more than that. We have Mizmor Litolda. Because we have Hallelujah, etc. Thank, praise God, praise Him, and so on. And if we take some of those Psukim, for instance, uh, I'll read one to Psukim. Um, hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hashem, I will praise God. And then we have Hallelujah, Hashem, in Hashemayim, the heaven should praise God. And, uh, and so on. Mizmor litodado means let's thank him. So you have Mizmor litoda, the psalm of thanksgiving, and you have Haliyah Hashem, Hashem, which is praise the Kadosh Baruch Hu. If you, if you start with the Ashkenaz, so you have incorporated the Shkede Zibra, Hodu Hashem Kiru Mishmo, and there too you have Hodu. Is you have here the idea of thanksgiving and the idea of halel. Because apparently the paradigm of doing both is when you say halel, when you, when you come across, you encounter God's greatness. It could be in history, which is what we do on halel, on the Amim Tovim. It could be in nature, which we do every day. It's the daily halel is the halel of our nature. If I can encounter God every day in nature, his glory, I can encounter, encounter it on uh, special historical occasions. But both times, it triggers the need to both thank and praise him. And therefore, Halil incorporates both of these elements. Now, there are three Halils in, um, in Halachar and Tefillah. One of them is the Halil, what we call Halil nowadays, which I said before is you know, from... Uh, the Pesukim of Mitzrayim and, and all that. He is Pesukim de Zimra. The third Halel is what we call Halel Hagadol. You know, it's Perek Kuf Lamed Vav, 136. Or uh, we, we say it in the Seder, and we say it every Shabbos in the Pesukim de Zimra. Right? Excuse me. Um, yeah, um, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look in um, Tilim or in a city for Shabbos morning, you'll find the two parallel chapters there. You have Kuf Lamed Hey, Kuf Lamed Vav. Kuf Lamed Vav is what I said a moment ago. Hodash Kitok Kilam Chasdo, Nemakem Lachim Gidolim Kilam Chasdo, Makem Sam Chem Kilam Chasdo. And it, it gives a whole litany of God's actions in Egypt and in the wilderness afterwards and, uh, and so on. You have Kufa and Hay. If you look at Kufa and Hay, and if you get the show early enough in Shabbos morning, you actually say both of them. It's almost a repeat. Kufa and Hay begins, uh, it's the same thing. Um, you basically, it's, it's almost a repeat. It's Kufa and Vav Kufa and Hey are almost redundant. What's the difference? Why do you need both of them? You need both of them because one of them begins, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Shem Hashem, Hallelujah, Avde Hashem. One of them begins, let's praise God with a pasuk which is very reminiscent of the other Hallel. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Shem Hashem, Hallelujah, Avde Hashem. And the second one begins, as you have here, Kuf Amidei is parallel to Kuf Yud Gimel. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hashem, Hallelujah, Shem Hashem. And here it's Hallelujah, Hallelujah, it's Shem Hashem. It's the exact same pasuk, just in reverse sequence. And Hold Hashem Kitov, Kilam Chasdo is the exact same thing, verbatim. Hold Hashem Kitov, Kilam Chasdo. And the reason for their petition, because once in the perspective of Thanksgiving, Hold Hashem Kitov, and once in the perspective of praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, Shem Hashem. And therefore, you, so every time you encounter Hallel, every time you have a Hallel, you always have, together with it, this, this duality, both the Hodah and the Hallel. 
And therefore, the first and most basic thing to recognize are all of these trakim of tilim, which are incorporated into the tefillah, is they repeat those they are halels, and they repeat, in a sense, this, uh, this paradigm. The hoda and the halel. Now, if you notice, and Pesach night, we say Kufam Edvav, we don't say Kufam Edhei, which is why, as I said before, there are many Rishonim who came to the conclusion that Pesach night, the Thanksgiving is more central, it's prioritized over the praise. On the other hand, if you look at Pesukei de Zimra, the day of Pesukei de Zimra, it seems pretty clear that the Hallelujah is much more basic and much more central than the Mizmah the Todah. Mizmah the Todah has a four-line uh, chapter. Uh, the Hallelujah are much longer. And so what you really have over uh, here is the reverse. When you talk about the daily Hallel, Hallel Shevachol Yom, you focus on praise. When you talk about special, unique Hallel on special occasions, you prioritize the Thanksgiving, but they always really go hand in hand. Now, what's said until now, it's first of all to point out the centrality of this paradigm, and to notice that Sukkot Zimra tried to incorporate the same idea of praise and Thanksgiving, with praise at the focus. It also has a certain halachic uh, ramification, which I'll explain now briefly. If a person is running late, and he comes late to show, it was not invented in the 20th century and uh, not even the 19th century. The idea of coming to show this goes back time immemorial. Uh, the Talmud Yerushalmi tells us that how can we say Geshem or Tal and Musaf and not in Shacharit? It would be more logical to say Geshem or Tal and Shacharit, not in, uh, not in Musaf. Yerushalmi says, let Kolama Taman. Not everybody is there yet. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're talking about Yom Tov. Uh, yes, so, uh, Mimele, the Shulchan Aruch, has a whole long discussion. If you're running late, you the Zimra, how do you play ketchup? And uh, the Shulchan Aruch gives a detailed list. Uh, first, you say 145, meaning Ashrei. Then you say Kufnun, 150. Then 148. There's a whole list uh, how to go about uh, prioritizing when you're late. Uh, I personally now. In light, of, and, and the, basically, if I'll give you the, the rundown of the list, it goes like this 145, 150, 148, then 149, 147 was equal. Uh, now, uh, based upon this, I would suggest it makes more sense to say one of these prakim and then say this one of the todah. Because if I add, for instance, let's say I'm running a bit late. And I said 145 and 150, and now I add 148 or 147, I'm just adding quantity. But if I say Mizmoda Toda, I add a whole new perspective. Because if I say Mizmoda Toda, I'm basically introducing a whole new angle, which I think it, it's also short, of course. Uh, and so I, that's why I think it makes a lot of sense, to, no matter how late you are, to add also Mizmoda Toda because it, it really gives a whole new element which is only, which is an integral part of Halil. Okay, now, having seen this, let's try to get a bit, uh, let, let's try going to get the Zimra a bit more. And we'll notice the following. And we say, Kuf Mem Hey, Kuf Mem Vam, it's 145, 46, 7, 8, 9, 150. Now, if we look at these, if we analyze these chapters, so we'll see there are two different motifs, or there are a bunch of them, but there are two main motifs running through these chapters. To illustrate this, I'll go back to what I said a moment ago. If you're running late, so ra or, or ra now, we prioritize, after Ashrei, we prioritize have 150, Hallelujah, Mukel Big Kodshom, the concluding one, and then 148, which is Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Tashem, Mina Shamaim. Let's praise God in the heavens. Uh, all the angels, all the heavenly bodies, etc. Sun, the moon, uh, and so on and so forth. Why do we choose after these two? In other words, all combined are six. Why do we choose these two to prioritize over the other three? It was after we 
said Ashrei. The reason is ba- it's rooted in, in, in a brief comment of Rashi. Rashi, in the same place, in the Sefer Shabbat, Kuf Yutet Amud Beit, and Rashi says, um, Two psalms of praise. Psalm It's a very enigmatic Rashi. Here are six, I said, well, there are six. Ashrei and the other five. Rashi somehow chose to spotlight two of them. Why did these psuche de zimra and the others are not psuche de zimra? Why did Rashi choose only these two? The reason we recommend using these, to prioritizing these two is because of this Rashi. But why did Rashi do it? He doesn't say a word. He just tells us what's psuche de zimra, these two, <coughs> these two mizamorim. So now we have to begin to analyze why does we have to not go back to Tanakh and ask ourselves, why does Rashi think that these two are more important? And here comes a very interesting thing. <clears throat> if, we, if we take, uh, let's begin looking now at, you know, at the Pakim and Tehilim. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll take, for instance, um, Kuf Mem Vav, 146. The first one after Ash, Ashrei, we'll get back to soon. Um, I'm in the middle. Ose Shemayim Va'aretz. So he created the heaven and the earth. Etayam et kol sherban. Hashomer met the olam. Kodesh Baruch Hu created the world, the, the cosmos. Ose mishpat la'ashuki. He does justice. He helps the downtrodden. Notei lechem erivim. He feeds hungry people. Basically, right, Kodesh Baruch Hu runs the world. He does chesed. He created the world. Hashgacha is providence. Now looks after the world. Uh, Shomeret Gerim, Etoba Amona, and so on. I continue a bit. The Kufem Zayin, Bonei Yerushalayim Hashem. He builds God, he builds Yerushalayim, Nitre Yisrael, he brings together all the Jews back to Israel, Kibbutz Galuyot. Rufredi Shurei Leif, he helps people who are in distress. Mechabesh um, Asultam, he heals their sorrows, and, and so on and so forth. Um, um, now, uh, if I compare this, to the last one, Kuf Nun. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Kelbe Kodesho. Praise God in his sanctuary, whatever. Hallelujah, Berkia Uzo, the heavens, Bigvurotam, uh, his greatness, his glory, Kirov Gudlo. Hallelujah, praise with the shofar, praise him with the uh, navel of the chinor, uh, with the lyre and the harp, etc. Praise him with drums, uh, with dance. Um, everyone should praise him. What's the big difference between the last one and the previous ones? One talks about content. He cre- what did he create? How does he run the world? And so it's Kuf Mem Vav, Kuf Mem Zayin, to talk about content. And they talk about how God created the world, and they, uh, how he runs the world, how he cares for Israel, and so on. Kuf no, there's no content. It's simply a, it's, it's a rallying cry to praise. It just summons you to begin praising. There is no praise. There is no content. Why should I praise? It doesn't say. Halu v'tofu machol. Halu v'nevel v'chinor. Just says get together the whole orchestra and thank him. Or praise him. But for what? It doesn't say. If you look back to Kuf Mem Chet, again, the same thing. Praise him mina shamayim. From the, from the heavens praise him. Bam Rumim, upstairs. Uh, all the angels, all the heavenly bodies, Shemesh, uh, Yerech, Kodok, it, it too deals not with what you're praising him, but how you're praising him. Or it's telling you to praise with all your might, with all the assets you have, with all the accessories. It doesn't say though so much what to praise. The inescapable conclusion seems to be, surprisingly, or very surprisingly, Rashi thinks that the focus is not the actual p- content. It's rather simply, it's, quite, it's, it's cheerleading. It's to encourage us to praise. Now, uh, this is, per se, it's very interesting. Uh, what's the meaning of for tefillah? The meaning for tefillah is apparently the following. 
there's a discussion in Poskim, what is the main role of Psukei de Zimra? Is Psukei de Zimra an essential part of the Tefillah? They're doing, is it an intrinsic part of Davini? Psukei de Zimra is supposed to be really, it's the introduction. It's, it's a prelude to Tefillah. Really, the real Tefillah is only from after Baruch Compare, for instance, Shacharit Arvit. In Arvit, there's no Psukei de Zimra. We start Baruch and then we say the Brachot of Kriyat Shema. In, uh, in the morning, we have the same thing. We have both, if anybody's familiar with the practice in Yeshivot, not Yeshivot is there, but uh, in the classic Yeshiva world, they often send the Chazan only from Yishtabach, or from Baruch really. So the Zimra saying your own, uh, you know, say the Hebrew Bizmach Bizmach Chachov Shi, you know, say it if you had, and we want to, you know, say it on your own. There's no, um, it's like come early to Shul, and, you know, and study that for you come early to Shul and say, Bukhada Shachar, come early to Shul and say, Bukhada Zimra. But the dabbing really begins only from Kriyat Shema and, and, the, and from Baruch Hu and onwards. And so the Zimra simply is, it's a promo really for, uh, for Tefillah. Or is it, now the problem begins the Gemara. The Gemara calls it Halel Shevachol Yom, meaning it is Halel. On the other hand, there's a second Gemara, which I didn't quote before. Le'olam yisader adam shivchosh al-mokom, which always praise God. The achar yachit palil, always praise God, and then daven, meaning that the praise is introductory stage. The real daven is only after you've done that. And there are the very simple question: What a person came late, and he missed parts of Sugi the Zimra, or even large parts? Does he have to stay later on and uh, make it up? If it's a if it's tefillah inherently, he should. If it's simply introduction to tefillah, so once you dive into it, it's too late. You know, there's no point in uh, in doing the, the. You can't do a pre-game show after the game is over, and you can't do a pre-tefillah tefillah once the tefillah has been over. But if it's inherently important, now Rashi here seems to not just towards the direction that it's really introduction. Hallelujah! What we're saying is. Rev up your engines, right? Betofu machov, benevel bechinar, and so on. In order, no, it's, he's not focusing upon the content of Halel. He's simply telling you, um, summon all your energy to be able to praise, which will happen when, presumably, when you start the real tefillah after Baruch Hu. <coughs> so it certainly is a surprising uh, twist over here. Um, <coughs> and this is, uh, excuse me, the similar term to the Rashi. <coughs> I mentioned the Rav before. The Rav saw this. I mean, he doesn't mention this Rashi, but from the Rav's perspective, this fits into a much deeper uh, point. It's a point which is central, but it's not always easy to identify. Or, or it's like this. It's, it's also problematic. <coughs> the Rav was of the opinion, and he repeats this in many different places, both hashkafically and halachically, that man just doesn't stand approach God. Now, the Kashbaruch Hu is Avinu Malkeinu. You just to walk into the White House and enter like that. There's a protocol. You need permission. And you need, you know, to gain access to Kashbaruch Hu, it's, uh, it's not something which is taken for granted. Or to put it differently, in his, in his uh, world too, you need a matir. You need a permit. Now, this is, on the one hand, it emphasizes, in the sense, if you want, a morale, Fear and awe of God, you know, the awe of God. Uh, it emphasizes how transcendental he is. It emphasizes that's not a trivial act to go and, you know, say, okay, I need some gula, I need some parnasai, you know. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, of course, it's also, you know, we, we, we also talk about Avinu, not only Malkei, you know. I think every one of us wants his child to come with free access. You don't want the child to be hesitant. You don't want the child to feel awkward or overwhelmed by uh, having to approach you. And uh, like what well, Yushalmi in, in Masechet Brachot talks about, Tfilah Ami Ki Yatov, Kashbrok is so accessible. Yushalmi says as follows, Ki Adam Nichas to Beit HaKneset, Ve Omeid Mechrei Hamud, you walk into Shul, you stand next to the wall, Um Itpalel Ki Adam, HaMesiyach Be'ozer Chaveiro. You talk to Hashbrook like someone whispering in his best friend's ear. 
<laughs> so that's all different approach. The approach of Kashrut was accessible, and the Rav thought that it's more so he really view, viewed this as a uh, as problematic. My father once said to me when I was young, I was extremely impressed by you know the by the scope of the idea. When I got older, I was uh, disillusioned because I was I was not to. Uh, because really the distance it creates between man and God, and we want, to, I think we do want to emphasize the nearness. But in the Rav's world, the idea of the Zimra is to gain the access. It's to allow you to approach Kodesh Baruch Hu, and therefore you emphasize what you do, you really emphasize those chapters which say that's legitimate to speak to Kodesh Baruch Hu. So you say, Hadu Kevukot, David HaMelech is telling me in Ruach HaKodesh that I can access the Kodesh Baruch Hu, I go speak to him, so the Vida Melech really is giving me the permit. <coughs> and from uh, the rest perspective, that's crucial. He, he focused upon the Pasuk in the beginning. Dori the Dori Shabach Maasecha. Generation upon generation, they praise you. Meaning, it's not me, the petty, trivial person standing in front of you. It's been done forever by the prophets. Amis so has been doing this forever. And I'm simply, you know, it's, it's not my chutzpah. I'm relying upon previous generations and the legitimacy that they granted. <laughs> At any rate, the way Rashi builds Pshuka de Zimra, they, they focus not so much upon the actual content, more upon the act of praising. In, uh, and that's why, in, at least in the way Rashi views, we prioritize 140 and 150 over the others, which reveal the content. Now this brings it to Ashrei. Everybody agrees that Ashrei is the most central uh, part of Pesuket de Zimra. <coughs> Why is this so? <coughs> so? The Gemara focuses upon the fact that it's said in ABC. It knows that you have the whole Aleph Beit, except for Nun, you have the whole Aleph. And you have the whole Aleph Beit over there. <coughs> but, and uh, <coughs> it seems to me, though, there's a side to that end also. You have Putech et Edech, and Mosvich Kol Chayrat What's the idea of the Aleph Beit? The idea of the Aleph Beit, uh, and this I did here from the Rav, um, the idea of the Aleph Beit is all-encompassing. On one level, I can't praise God. Was, uh, God is too great to be praised by everything. So I take a representative from each letter, and I want to show that really I should praise him forever and forever, but I lack the ability to do that. So I take from every, uh, every letter of the ABC, I take the alphabet, I take one, uh, one phrase. I guess it's to show that basically we should be f focusing, you know, we should be praising him, uh, but too much praise is uh, problematic. So we do it representatively. Um, but also, if you want, also so that I, I use that language allows me, and I said before, Now, what's the potential of the And what's the other point? And the God. What seems to me, and uh, I'll say the following, Ashrei combines both worlds of the rest of the Pesukah Zimra. Now, you have, I said before, 148, 150 discuss the need to praise, the act of praising. 146, 7, and 9 actually have the content of the praise. Ashrei combines both. Ashrei, the first half of it, focuses mostly upon the need to praise. The second half, Discusses more on the content. Because Rav supports uh, people who are in need of support. He, uh, he gives us parnasa. He gives us food. And so basically, the first half discusses the idea of praising. The second half discusses what I'm praising about. So Ashrei is the best of both worlds. And it combines both, both elements. And therefore, Ashrei is the most basic. And it's the reason why it is prioritized upon all others. Okay, this is uh, in a nutshell. There's more to be said, of course, but uh, at the moment, uh, this is the basic idea of Tzukid Zimra. You take Prokip of Tehillim, and you have to do two things. You, you want both praise and thanksgiving. You also want to discuss the act of praising. And by the way, thanksgiving, I think, is less so. In thanksgiving, you obviously should thank the Kodesh Baruch Hu. That's a basic, uh, that's so basic, I don't need someone to come and say it's, it's permissible. The act of praising, though, is indeed more problematic, and therefore we do summon David Melech and Tehillim to, to allow us to do this. And then we have some Prokim, which are the actual content, and they are really an extension of the Tefillah itself. Like, if I was asked to say, it's to get the Zimra, 
an extension of tefillah or simply some intro introduction or, uh, or pre-tefillah at the beginning. I think those of content are an extension. Those which talk about summing ourselves to praise are not an extension. They're simply, they are the introduction to tefillah. I said before, that's why Ashray, which combines both, is probably the best. <coughs> and that's why we do repeat Ashray a second time later on also. <coughs> now let's move on for uh, the time we have left to Kabbalat Shabbat. <coughs> Kabbalat Shabbat is another example of uh, a whole unit of uh, Tilim <coughs> inserted <coughs> into Tfilah. <coughs> so it's true that Kabbalat Shabbat is a much later development. Uh, and basically, the 16th century Tzvat, the Kavat Shabbat, as we know it, became part of the Tefillah. But nevertheless, it's already 500 years, and it's certainly deserving uh, of our attention. Let's, uh, first of all, let's just ask, what is that to achieve? Or if you want, why is, what, what does that have to do with Shabbat? Because why is Kavat Shabbat, and I'm speaking now not about Mizmor Shilam Shabbat. Whatever, there it says, Mizmor Shilam Shabbat, but that, by the way, was that was the part of, that was Kabbat Shabbat even before. I think now about what we call Kabbat Shabbat, the part from the Chumiranana until the Chadot. What's the idea about Kabbat Shabbat, and why do these chapters have to do with Shabbat at all? And so, number one, I, I, I begin with the following statement: Shabbat, If you think for a moment about the Chadodi is not, of course, Tanakh. It was written in, in the 16th century. The Chadodi emphasizes Shabbat, really that we, when Shabbat begins, you enter into intimacy with Kaddish Baruch Hu. The Chadodi, the Kratz Kala, Shabbat, he said, Boy Kala, Boy Kala. He emphasizes Shabbat as an intimate time in which men and God meet, Am Yisrael, or Am Yisrael, the Kaddish Baruch Hu meet. Right, Shabbat, Shabbat is a bridge between Am Yisrael the Kadosh Baruch Hu, I would say that in the Shamu every, uh, every Shabbat. And um, we emphasize the, really the connection between us and the Kadosh Baruch Hu. And, and, the, and to the exclusion of Goyim. You know, however, what is Kabbalat Shabbat? I think Kabbalat Shabbat seems to me, it's not the Shabbat itself, it's rather the point of transition in the week from the six days of creation to Shabbat. Six days of creation are concluded Friday late afternoon, or Ben HaShemashot, at the twilight of Friday. And basically we have here six prakim, which deal with the, with the glory and greatness of creation. It doesn't do with Shabbat. It is, not, it is not Shabbat. We want, before you enter Shabbat, before you leave the world behind, you enter into this intimate chamber of time and you leave, you lock, and Shabbat really is like entering into a private chamber. You lock the door behind you and you leave the world outside. You, uh, you leave the, at, at the doorstep of Shabbat, you leave uh, all your business, all your, all, all your pursuits of the whole week, and you enter in this time capsule in this intimate uh, chamber in which the world around you disappears. <coughs> but before you do that, we want you spend a few moments reflecting upon the six days of creation and to man's position within the cosmos. And the Chuli Randa, to a large degree, tells man, yes, God chose man. Man was created with Salem Elohim. Man was given a mandate to develop the world. Man is a great creature and you know, he rules the world uh, and so on and so forth. And then you know, Tilim and Perikhet says, Atasre Matre Elohim. The man is saying, uh, you know, you know, he's, he's godlike, just, you know, he's not quite there. We have Matre Elohim. But you also have the opposite perspective in that same chapter in Perikhet, uh, which is how trivial and small and weak man is relative to cosmos, and of course, to the Creator, how he's a, when Yishayah will talk about being a drop in a bucket, and uh, we said, and of course we say in uh, Yom Kippur, kechalom yauv, kitzitz poreach, right, a uh, speck of dust, uh, a fleeting dream. Um, this is the perspective I think about Shabbat. What Shabbat says, before the Shabbat, and before you have this rendezvous, the Kadosh Baruch Hu, which emphasizes a Jew's unique uh, position in the world, a little hum 
want a, a little humility, a little anava, a little remember exactly how small and petty and, and trivial you are. Look at the look at the world around you and you stay in front of the Alps uh, or the Himalayas or the or the Pacific Ocean, recognize how small you are, how meaningless you are. It's essential to always have this double perspective and never to forget that, you know, like Chazal, Chazal put it very bluntly, Yatush Kadamach. A mosquito was born, was created before man. And uh, never forget that there's no way of knowing, and the Rambam emphasizes this in the Word of Uchim, there's no way of knowing whether man or mosquitoes are more central to creation. Uh, always have this perspective that you know, man should not feel too great. And this duality, this dialectic is constantly within the sources. And Kabbalah Shabbat is basically A, to describe the greatness of creation. I think B, to also have a little sense of perspective of who we are. Um, and before any anyway, it, it's really, a, put it differently, Kabbalah Shabbat is looking backwards at the week and at creation. And it doesn't, it doesn't work Shabbat, it really is, at the transition point, it's a retrospective about the six days. This, is, this also explains, by the way, a halachic point, which I found perplexing until I recognized this. And if a, when does Shabbat begin, halachically? When does the tzibur, you know, when do we accept Shabbat? Or when do we have come, when do we kabel Shabbat uh, halachically? So it says, Mizmur Shema Shabbat, or we say, Boi Kala, Boi Kala. Right, and if you have an Avalon Shul, so the Avalon and the Shul, Bismu Shul and Shabbat. Why not the Chuner Anima? Makes much more sense. The reason that it says in the classical source, Bismu Shul and Shabbat, because they didn't have the Chuner Anima. But once we introduced the Chuner Anima in the 16th century, we should have updated the Halachot that Shabbat begins the Chuner Anima. But nevertheless, if you look at all the, if you look at all the Halachic works, it still remains, Shabbat enters Bismu Shul, not the Chuner Anima. This has often uh, has ramifications for Avelus, Nidad occasionally has uh, significance, uh, and so on. Why, so why did we not, you know, basically, we begin Shabbos and Chunaranana? I think if, if you take into account what I said a moment ago, it's not so. Shabbos remains the Chadodi Mizmoshir. Chunaranana is simply, as I said before, it's really reflecting upon creation. Shabbos hasn't entered yet, you're still looking backwards and what happened the previous six days, and therefore you haven't arrived at Shabbat yet. You arrive at Shabbat only when you're indeed in the Chadov, you invite Shabbat, and boy, Kalam, it's Moshe no Shabbat, you will, she will actually arrive. And so therefore, halakhically, we continue to view Shabbat as uh, entering in the Chud- at, at the end of the Chadov, even though uh, we begin Kabbat Shabbat and the Chunaran. Now, a brief, let's say, describe the structure of, of, of this Trakim. So first, we have the same question. Do they deal with praise and thanksgiving? <coughs> to, uh, <coughs> here now, just to be brief, because uh, the time constraint, notice something very interesting. We begin with Chul and uh, it sounds, in a sense, like, <coughs> so let's, let's, let's look at the pursuit for a second. Uh, it's begin, beginning of 95, Tzadik okay? Let's sing out to God. Uh, she doesn't say too much yet. We will thank him. It sounds like it's more betoda. On the other hand, the more you delve into the prakim, they sound much more like halel. They emphasize much of the glory of the Kodesh Baruch Hu, much less what he's doing for us. Uh, once more, it's a judgment call, and I don't. Uh, but uh, it seems, broadly speaking, there's more how that. So that's something fascinating, which is, how do we conclude? <coughs> Meaning, um, we, right, if you remember Kabbalah Shabbat, we say, etc., 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. 99 is Hashem Malachi Gizu Amin, and then what? 29. Meaning, if though you go to a show with the Mizrach, so instead of 29 chavtet, you get after 99 comes 100, which is Mizmoli Toda. In other words, if you go to the Mizrach, so the Minhag is to say, and 
And then you conclude, not with Mizmor le David, you conclude with Mizmor le Toda, etc. If you look in Dat Mikran, Mos Hacham's uh, Perush uh, of Tilim over there, he points out the various parallelisms between Mikanaf um, Abit Toda, Mizmirot Neri Elohim, Mizmor le Toda, Bo Lefanav Bir Nana, the Chul Nera Nana, Bo Lefanav Bir Nana, Basically, the frame, it's another good example of a frame in Tehillim. You have the beginning caption, you have the concluding statement, and uh, they create a nice frame. To put it differently, there's a lot of sense in actually viewing Kabbalah Shabbat as a unit which begins with L'chud al-Hashem, Nehru Tzvi Shem, Nekanafah bit Toda, and concludes with Mizmor bit Toda, etc. And the Minhag of the Mizrach is quite convincing. However, the upshot of it is, is that you basically color these mizmorim with as Thanksgiving. What, why do Mek Ashkenaz do it differently? I assume because Mek Ashkenaz wants not to view it as Thanksgiving, but as praise. Mizmor le David, Perkhaftet, is a prime example of praising God for the greatness of the universe. It's not so much, it's not a mizmor of Toda, it's a mizmor of Halel. You talk about his glory, his greatness, uh, how he uh, rules creation. It's, 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 it's the omnipotence of the Kosh Baruch, which is so uh, developed over there, not necessarily that, he's, that we thank him for what he did to us. So the two minagim, whether you conclude with mizmor kuf, mizmor of Toda, or whether you conclude with He's not the David, they basically color all of Kabbalah Shabbat in some of a different light. Now, <coughs> telegraphically already, uh, <coughs> what else is going on? So if you notice, and it's very clear to see this from the captions, um, basically it divides into two sections. Shir Hashem, Shir, I'm, I'm, uh, after we have, putting aside the opening one, now we're going into Tzadik Vav, Tzadik Zayin, Tzadik Chet, Tzadik Tet, 96 to 99. You have Shiru Hashem, Shir Chadash, Hashem Machtagel Haaretz. That's one group. And that repeats itself. Shir Mizmor, Shir Hashem, Shir Chadash, Kini Flot Asa. Hashem Machtagel Zu Amin. So you have, it divides basically into group, two groups. First group begins, Shir Hashem, Shir Chadash, Hashem Malach. And the second group repeats it. Mizmor, Shir Hashem, Shir Chadash, Hashem Malach. And so it's quite clear that 96, 97 are one group, 98, 99, the parallel, as you would say, each one begins with Shir Hashem, Shir Chadash, each one continues with Hashem Malach. And, uh, and what is the, what's basically the point over there? Um, now, the point is as follows, each one begins with a creation, and the second is more deals with not creation, how the world is run afterwards. It was first you create the world, and you praise God for creating the world. Then you set into motion and talk about how he, how he rules the world. In other words, if you want Bria and Hashgacha, how he creates the world, how he then rules the world. Uh, why do you need, though, a devil cycle? So it seems to me, what I'm saying now is a generalization. I'm not claiming it fits every pasuk. But as a generalization, you have in the first one, the first two, in other words, Salivot Zayin, it's much more harmony, the harmonious, and the tzaddik chet, tzaddik ted is conflict. Or to put it differently, in the first we talk about mankind in general, Jews and goyim are, are more or less classified the same. There's very little, uh, there's very little tension with the goyim. There's one pasuk over there. Pasuk says, "Yivosh um, kol defesel mitalulim be'lilim." They should be embarrassed, but it's not a war or a battle. You're not trying to defeat them. It's pointing out that they should be embarrassed that they, that, that they worship uh, <coughs> idols. But essentially, there we talk, we talk here about how Kashbok, the universal view of the world, how Kashbok rules the entire world, his greatness. Everyone from that, from, from when I said in the beginning of how trivial like, that you're a speck of dust, doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a guy, everyone's a speck of dust relative to the God's transcendental greatness. And so in that regard, these Ms. Maureen just talk about how great he is and it lumps everyone together. Sadiq Chet Sadiq Ted is because Baruch Hu said, okay, Israel. And you can see very, it's very clear from the look at Sadiq Zayin, Hashem Malach Tagel Haaretz, because Baruch Hu rules the world, everyone rejoices, because everyone here, it's all mankind's universal perspective. In Sadiq Ted, Hashem Malach, you gizu amin. The Goyim are angry and upset and how to do battle. 
And the reason is because Tzadik Ched and Tzadik Tet talk about Zachar Chasdov and Tov Beit Yisrael, because Baruch Hu makes faith and will to Am Yisrael, and the Goyim are angry and out to battle, Yerzu Amin. On the other hand, Tzadik Vav and Tzadik Zayin, you just talk about his glory in general, and all mankind is lumped together. So you have this double cycle, of like two times two, one to talk about how he runs the world from the universal perspective of the Creator, and the other one is really Hashem Ok Yisrael, has to cre- and, de- and therefore you get a different perspective. Talk, it's more to talk about Tefillah and Tehillim, but we'll have some other time. So that's a lot about it.